pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right, thank you. <laughs> and we got everybody on board tonight, so we definitely have a quorum that makes for good meeting, right? Okay. Um, regular agenda, you guys have got that in front of you. We made one adjustment to that, added in. Yep. It'd be the addition of a sheriff's update. Right after so, seven. Yep. So we're going to get you guys on the official sheet here, but we'll make amends here. I know. Matt, we can do take that. Care of that. We can do that. <laughs> That's the only then. Anybody? Okay. Anybody got anything else they want to add or change? Motion so. to approve with the second okay. adjustment. Okay. Brian makes a motion. Get a second. Second. Okay. John does a second. All in favor, say aye. 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 Okay. Motion to approve. Let's go on to number four here. So we got the consent agenda, guys. Vendor invoices. A um, couple of aggressive estimates. No change orders. John, we're okay. Just keeping them on the, you know, keeping them on the. Next on month there will, next month there will be a change order, John. So make sure you put that on the calendar. <laughs> Just having fun. At, yeah, having fun at his expense here. Um, anybody got any questions though on the consent agenda? Um, I can't verify, but can you verify that Excel's is eighty thousand one ninety eight? You got it. Which one? Excel Mechanical, progressive estimate number three. Up there. I see it. Oh, is it a separate item? That's a separate item. Do we have that somewhere else? On the agenda somewhere? I did not include that in the Oh, well, when, let's just Either add it. Three or four. What's that? They're not in the. Uh... Oh, they're listed as approved consent. Why are we replacing it? Yep, and then the same thing for the crossing. Yeah. Are they not in the list, Vance? I can tell you what they are. Can you just run through it, Jim? Yep, certainly. Really, just really right. quick, let them know what it is. So uh, progressive S number four is in the amount of $8,260. This is for the remaining work, on, not the remaining work, but this is for work to date on the pedestrian crossing. The project is complete. We just hope we, have, we are withholding $2,588.10 upon a final completion. Brett and I are going to go through that. Um, so that one, like I said, is an estimate number four for the amount of $8,260. Nothing out of the ordinary there. And the other one is progressive as an estimate number three for $80,198 for Excel Mechanical and the water meter replacement project. Right now they're down to less than 10 meters to replace. They still have to supply some, but they're down to less than 10. We went through it this morning and got the list all caught up. So. That is great. They're about a month ahead. They figured that by the end of the year they'd get it all in. And they're, so they're hoping by the end of the week they'll have it down to less than around that five number. If not. There are some people that are kind of holding out and their scheduling around the holidays gets a little bit weird, but they're trying to make it work with whatever they can. The uh, ally meters, they've got about uh, half of them in and the other half they're trying to get. Otherwise it'll be into January when the uh, remainder of those come for the trailer home, trailer hoses. So does that I mean, yeah. do, I don't know if we want to go through this now or we'll go through this later. Um, doesn't matter to me. Um, well, I was just going to ask, so can we begin the electronic read they, starting in December? I told them this morning to get DSG and Census online to come out and train at them how to run the thing and how to get the data so, so and dump that, the that's data. Goal. That's the goal is to we, try and start the meter read in December. I would say that is. You get your training done in yeah. the first part, provided so they can do it. 10. I'm what we've asked is the residents to still read their meters for the next couple months, and then we'll send a notice saying, hey, we got it all working, and they'll ha then they can stop reading their meter. But we'll have some overlap where we do electronic read and self-read well, that way. <coughs> yeah. In the process of reading the yes, meters, pretty soon. confirm with what we're expecting, right? Because people yeah. are reporting that we should be confirming that they're Yes. Getting is actually what we're seeing. Yeah. yeah, I was very happy to hear they were down to yeah, less, no, than, no, less than 10, great. considering they started with over 400 and some, and, yeah. and um, getting into some places more than once on some occasions yep. was yep. was a little tricky, so very good news. Okay, so 
there that is there anything else that you need to I don't know, point guys, out? Any, any other questions on this? No. Okay, I'm gonna accept the motion so, to so so. do we need to add the progressive estimate to to do we need to no. add, add we don't need to make an adjustment to this? No. It's and they are they are on the SharePoint, so okay, that's yeah. part of the consent agenda. Okay. Yeah, you don't need to add them, they're on the consent agenda. Uh, so you're fine. Okay. Okay, so I'll entertain a motion to accept the uh, consent agenda. So moved. Okay, second. Dave, I'll take Dave. You got a second? Second. Oh, second. Okay, yep, yeah, pretty much. <laughs> Chelsea, <laughs> Chelsea gave <laughs> Chelsea did this the second. I'll just let you guys handle it. <laughs> no. We're good. All right. All in favor of say aye. 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 All right, motion carries. Okay. Minutes from November 5th. Don't double check. I don't think there's. I didn't put any notes on there, so I didn't see anything. I don't know. Anybody else got any questions on the November 5th meetings? Now I'm going to accept the motion to accept the meet minutes as written. Motion to approve. Okay, Ryan does the motion. I need a second. Second. Okay, Chelsea does a second. Okay, all in favor say aye. 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 All right, motion carries. We had the special meeting here that we did on the 13th that we were meeting with Matt Lauer and company. <laughs> It's going to be tough. <laughs> I know. It's fun, though. I, yeah, I enjoy that. Yeah, I made that connection that that's, oh, yeah. <laughs> it's not spelled. So not, 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 not the same. Power, not not lower. Not lower. Not lower. No, it's not lower. Let's, well, it's good to see him back. Well, we'll remember his name. Yeah, <laughs> yeah it's good to see Matt back to work. Oh, yeah. Yeah, 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 it is. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I'll so, make a motion to approve the uh, special meeting minutes. All right. John makes a motion to get a second. Second. All right, Dave does a second. All in favor say aye. 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 All right, motion carries. All right, so now we have time for public comment. Anybody got anything you want to bring up, chit chat about? <laughs> going once, <laughs> going twice. All right, we'll move along to the uh, Sheriff's Department. Jesse, I'll let you have the mic. Sure. Again, thanks for allowing uh, us to come this evening and changing up the agenda a little bit to accommodate our, our schedule. I appreciate that. Yep. Um, I just wanted to, uh, I was actually working out with Brian. We were working out at the gym together. <laughs> and um, he, not that that's funny or I don't, I'm not <laughs> laughing. I'm not laughing at him. <laughs> at the gym. At least you're you sure yeah. about Brian. This <laughs> doesn't end well. I and he said that you guys might be discussing the uh, the sheriff's contract this evening. So I mentioned to him that I could certainly come out and see if you guys had any questions for us um, on the contract, if you were going to be discussing it tonight, um, if you had any concerns with it. We want to make sure that uh, we're providing a good service to you and that we're, we're uh, transparent, we're educational on anything that we're doing and, and why we're doing it the way that we're doing it. So... Um, would certainly entertain any questions, anything in reference to the contract or anything with our agency, um, anything like that. I guess I don't, we have the contract in front of us, guys. I don't know if we've seen it. I don't think I've got it. But anyway. Oh, you don't have it yet? Vance does have a copy of it, okay. so we'll be passing it around here. Okay. 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 That's fine. Um, no, no, I could change from last year. Yeah, it's, price it, it, yep. price well, I could tell you. So last year the it was at one sixty one five ninety six and it's pretty much the same this year. That's okay. what it so shows me. So cost, the cost to the city is not increasing. No. For this contract period. No, nope, not from what I show. So, okay. um, and of course I don't know if anyone has questions on what that cost covers or. I think you guys probably unless it changed from last year. I think yeah. we got that part of it. Usually, it, you know, it does go up usually a little bit, and that's usually for our. Our cola or our cost of living increase just to cover those costs, but it's usually not. But the equipment more. costs and so forth, the, the I don't know if there's been any additional equipment that the deputies have had to carry with them 
when they've been on duty mm -hmm. that 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 hasn't changed or that no. has been absorbing that cost of that equipment? Yep, we've been absorbing that that cost. So and uh, usually if we do have any equipment costs, it's because we got to switch vehicles or something and then okay. cages. But normally the uh, county will absorb that cost. So. Well, the first thing I was going to ask about was the body cams. I'm assuming that's standard equipment now, or is that we equipment? we do not have body cams right now. Uh, the little box that you see on their vest right there is actually just a uh, voice recorder, mm -hmm. and that's hooked up to their camera in the car. We still have in-car in cameras. Okay. Uh, we haven't made the switch to body cams yet uh, for a couple reasons. Number one is is the storage is really expensive, and so one has to maintain that the storage of that being evidence and for a lengthy period of time and that type of thing. So we haven't really figured out a really good solution to that yet or uh, figured anything like that into the budget. And then uh, the, the thing with the new body cams is they almost make them better than what the human eye sees. So we're trying to research a product that would be similar to that of the human eye so that everyone is judged equally, fairly, that type of thing. Because some of the body cameras can actually see at night and you know, our guys can't really always see in those types of areas. So, so no, we're, we'll, we continue to research that and I see us potentially going to those in the future. But right now, we're, we don't have those. We just have the voice recorder and, uh, and our camera systems in our cars. So, mm -hmm. um, but as far as any, any other equipment, we haven't really picked up anything else other than we've gone to those vest covers that you see. Their vest is a little bit different, that brown. And the reason that we went to those was for uh, officers or deputies having back issues. Uh, this takes the weight off of their belt, and when they're sitting in the car, they're not sitting sideways from everything on their belt. They can get some of it off their belt and up onto the vest. So pretty much law enforcement across the nation is going to that just because we're starting to get a lot of deputies with back issues and things. So that's why we've switched to those. So that's why they look uh, look a little bit different. But um, this, this right here, back here, is Ross Krause. And uh, you guys all know Jesse Castle, of course, because he's been out here for a couple of years. Uh, Jesse Castle will be rotating out in January. That's going to be my question. Do we yep. get new or mm -hmm. keep the same? Yep. And uh, you're going to get Ross in here. And Ross does a, obviously Jesse does a very nice job for us. I'm sure you guys are a little bit disappointed that he's leaving. Yep. Um, yep. There's <laughs> a, Nothing against you, Ross. There's, you know? there's, 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 <laughs> yep, there's a few reasons uh, why, why, number one, we try to rotate officers every couple of years. But even on top of that, uh, Jesse's got a few different assignments at the office now that he's picked up in addition to his regular duties he's on SWAT team and he also does um, criminal interdiction so some of those things might have started to pull him away from him actually being down here because he's on call for some of those things uh, Ross does a really nice job for us he's really uh, community oriented so he's going to be the type of person that's going to be getting out and visiting with your businesses a lot your residents and forming <coughs> those relationships with them which is obviously really important to the work that we do in sharing information and criminal information. So uh, he'll, he'll do a nice job and I think you guys will be really happy with him as well. Lindsay will still be here, of course, because we try to offset those years so you don't lose two at one time. Mm -hmm. That type of thing, so. How long you been with the department, Ross? Uh, just about three and a half years, two years on the road here in December. So. Where have you been assigned so far? Uh, pretty much everywhere in the county. Um, through our adopt a community program where we kind of focus with not through contract community but through um, just our deputies focusing on certain community i've been allison leonard uh the last two years we've learned their meetings uh, okay. working with them so looking forward to being out here i'm glad captain john you know throw me too high up there because <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm, be... I'm okay at my job <laughs> <laughs> he, he could be thrown up there he, he does a good job so but i'm looking forward to being out here and um, so yeah, he'll, he'll take over and in January. We'll have a little bit of a transition period with Jesse so we can kind of get to know things down here and um, meet some of the business owners and do some of those things before he just rotates out, so. Well, being a business owner in town, I don't know if everybody's aware, these guys stop by middle of the night. They'll check doors, check your property. I picked them up on video before and it's just fantastic what they do. Yeah, that's one thing that we uh, that we concentrate on at night because um, you know during the day they can make contact with people that are out and about, but at night, you know, people are obviously sleeping for the most part. So that's one thing that we like them to do is get out and do door checks and just one of those things businesses. that goes unnoticed. You sure. know, that people don't realize how much they do do for our community. So 
Um, in addition to that, I think Jesse, you gave them. Uh, you guys have had the code red letter, and that's been sent out to your residents, correct? Correct. Okay. Yeah. Um, and so we want to make sure that everyone's on board with that and they understand that. And then uh, I had mentioned to Brian and um, Vance, and I think uh, I think you were in there, Brent. And mm -hmm. I stopped by one day, and uh, one thing that I would like to do for the businesses down here is do a active shooter training for the businesses. I've done that out in Castleton, and I've done it in Kindred, and I'm going to do it up in Arthur uh, shortly here, but we'd like to do it down here in your businesses as well, and what that does is it gives uh, the business owners um, some ideas if they did have an active threat or active shooter come into the business, how to address that, at least until law enforcement can get there and take care of the threat. Uh, a lot of people have kind of a misunderstanding that a lot of active shooter, active threat situations happen in the school environment. Actually, a majority of them happen in businesses. They just don't get reported as often as they do in the schools because there's children involved. Um, but we want to make sure that our businesses are at a high level of readiness to respond to those types of threats as well. So um, we'll work through Jesse and, and Ross to get that scheduled and certainly invite all everyone on the city council to come through that as well because not only can you use it in your business, but if you're out with your family at West Acres, it's going to give you some ideas on how you could respond to that type of threat. And, uh, you may become a leader in that type of situation because you have the training because a lot of people don't get that training. So uh, we'll bring that to you. And uh, it's been really successful. A lot of people have been asking for that training in Fargo, a lot of businesses. But um, it was myself and one other person that I teach at, and I, I prefer to get it done out in the county first before I start actively doing it in Fargo and West Fargo because I'm going to get real busy with it. So. Okay, that was going to be my one question I was going to ask you about if we could maybe get in on that so that's good yep um, yep think, uh, <clears throat> so I think yeah. that's good to have that knowledge yep and that's why you know with our contracts that helps yep. branch it out to you guys and get you that stuff so we'll, we'll do that the other question I've got for you too is I know I had talked to Paul about this six seven eight months ago but um, you know we currently have running two deputies I don't know when we have to sh think about shifting gears to two and a half or three I don't mm -hmm. know if you can help recommend or let us know because I'm, I'm off the top of my head, I don't know when we need to step it up again. Sure. You know, really, as a council, you guys will have to make that decision. But I told uh, Jesse just to send me some statistics so we could look at some things. And do, do they have this, the year-end thing, or this thing that you sent me or not? Not really? Okay. But we'll have him email this to you. It kind of gives you an idea of your calls from 2016 to 2018, yep. whether they're going up or down, right. that type of thing. Uh, one thing that I will tell you is... Um, when I come in, in on January um, as a sheriff, there's a few things that we're going to concentrate on out in the communities that uh, will be a little bit different. Uh, it's going to be more investigative stuff and drug stuff. That's my background um, is narcotics investigations and investigations, uh, property crimes, personal crimes. And uh, through uh, Ross working down here and building relationships with your community, some of that information will start getting passed to our office you know, who's doing what down here and those types of things. And as we get that information, we're going to develop that a little bit more. I'll be assisting them with that. And uh, so the calls for service might change a little bit. This will be more, a little bit more generated stuff that we do. Okay. Um, but uh, certainly uh, narcotics stuff, mm -hmm. we want to try to keep that out of the community. Right. So that's one thing that we'll be concentrating on and working and developing a little bit more. Okay. So... Um, Take us a little, few months to start digging into some stuff, but that's fine. Uh, like I said, but, I just want to be. But you can, uh, we can send you this, and you know, we're we're, we're certainly open to um, always working with you to add more people if that's something you're interested in. Of course, I don't have the final say in that. That has to. Right. I present that to the commission, and they have to approve it because of budget reasons. But I already talked to Chad Peterson, who's our our uh, portfolio holder for the law enforcement piece with the commission, and he is totally on board with trying to get more people out in the communities and stuff. So I, I don't see a problem if you guys wanted to do that. There's kind of a so. date for that, isn't there? Like you, you need to have notice for when Yeah, it would have been yeah. earlier. It was yeah. Yeah. I mean, you guys, you I guys mean, put your budget together. together we, September, our budget's right? already been submitted right. for next year. But we can, we can uh, you know, like when the street crimes group got started, that came out of budget cycle. And sometimes we could go back and ask for that additional stuff and they'll prove it out of budget cycle. It just kind of depends on how much money it is. Because mm -hmm. so. that really boils down to, you know, call volume and response time. Right? Mm -hmm. It's like how many of these investigations are you chasing down and 
<clears throat> you know, what's the overall response time? Because that, if, if you're seeing that the, the response time is increasing because the guys are so busy with other things, or, or that just the overall call volume uh, and follow-up is requiring more effort, you know, that, those, if there's benchmarks that you can use to say, okay, we're, we're reaching that point where the guys are overloaded, right? There's yeah. too much going on, you know, to give us that recommendation. Sure, so it, in this thing that he sent me here that I have on my phone. Yeah, okay. Um, we, don't, we don't really record our response time on there. However, we can figure that out for you if that's something you guys are interested in. We'd have but to I mean, you, few, you, guys, you guys track that, right? You guys track. We, we do it through dispatch, but it's not at like a regular stat, sure. so we can, but oh, we can certainly pull it up. But I mean, it, it's really your judgment call, right? To, to say, because that, that's one of the rationales behind going to two was to reduce that overall response time because there were, you know, situations where it was going to be, depending on where you guys were at, you could be in Kindred or a long ways in Castleton and it was going to take yep. you 20 minutes sure. to get here, right, if a call yep. did happen. And that's what we're trying to say, okay, overall when calls have happened, you're going to be able to respond within, you know, five, ten minutes. Yep. And that, that's the, the key element, right, if that response time is going to be over a certain threshold, then it becomes a safety issue. Right. Exactly. And it yep. all boils down to the number of and severity of types of calls we're getting, right, in the town as well. Sure. <clears throat> and so, um, yeah, I mean, you guys, if you guys want to look at this, and then certainly we can chat about it. And you know, what, one thing I did notice on here is that your calls for service went down a little bit, mm -hmm. but that can also be attributed to because people see us more. Right. I, mean, I don't know. Mm -hmm. You know, that's that's right. kind of a little bit hard to measure. And of course, we'd have to look at everything else, but. Um, the amount of hours and stuff that you have on here is, is uh, pretty constant. Through, uh, through October also, so you had a couple extra months, whereas the previous two years are on there as well, and those are for the entire year. So there's a couple months that are Great. Yeah, yeah, but I see that too. So I'd say after the first of the year, let's evaluate this a little bit. And yep, sure. The, the other part of it too is going to be now that you're taking a little bit different approach, right? Like narcotics investigation and so forth. Those sometimes take more work. Right to follow up, and yep. so that that's going to be another factor that plays into this. Do we have a big enough problem to follow up? Is so it we'll work? we'll use uh, obviously whoever we have stationed down here will be down here, <clears throat> but I'll we'll, I'll be pulling additional resources from our agency okay. to work some of that stuff. Okay. That you won't. That's just because okay. it'll be so it's, a it's going to be county wide. Yeah. Okay. And um, so you know we got some access to some different resources okay. that we aren't necessarily using right now. Uh, like street crimes people and different yep. different things that we can potentially use okay. so um, yeah and then just in general I mean for me the biggest thing is communication so if people are approaching you communication and education so if people are approaching you and you know they're concerned with something we're doing uh, one thing that I don't like to happen is things to fester so to speak people talk about it and not not exactly know why we're doing something we're doing I like to hit those problems head on because a lot of times if we just do education and let people know why we do something we do, they're usually pretty good with it or they understand it. Um, so make sure that if people have problems and they're coming to you guys with something that we're doing, um, I always will have an open door, give me a call, I'll come down, I'll talk to the person, whatever, and we'll get it figured out because yeah. we want to make sure that we have a good relationship with your, with your community. and. And what we're doing, and so people understand it. So yeah, I agree okay. totally. So we'll, we'll do that too. If we start hearing something, we'll uh, yeah. try and nip it in the bud. It just makes it easier for everyone. And yep. a lot of times, people just don't understand something sometimes. And so the one, no, I was just to say one of the challenges I know we're going to be dealing with next year, and you guys probably know this too. School's going to be coming down here and building next, so we're going to have a lot of trailers and things like that up sure. on seventy six and seventeen along with some of the other locations that are going to be building up too. So there's going to be a lot more opportunity, unfortunately, for theft mm -hmm. in the town here. So I don't know if you guys are aware of it, but it's just something that I know next year will, that'll be kind of something we'll see we're going to try and be more cognizant of then too with all the development going on down here. Yeah, we do actually have some thefts going on right now. So we had some, some uh, storage units. And this is where that education thing comes in kind of. Yeah. So we had some storage units broken into in Mapleton. And we had a patrol meeting shortly thereafter and I told our guys, hey, if you see cars out driving around and they don't seem like they fit the area or it's late at night and you're just kind of wondering, ah, this is strange, what are they doing out here? 
I want you to, you know, let's try to grab a plate, maybe get a traffic stop so we can identify these people to see if we can link it back. Well, the same person got followed two nights in a row up by Hunter and by our guys, right? And so he called in a complaint and uh, said, hey, you know, you guys follow me around every night. Is there any particular reason why they're doing that? And I said, well, actually, that's my fault. I told them, you know, we're trying to figure out who's breaking into these places. And we're trying to identify people out at 1, 2 in the morning. And so uh, yeah, I told them to do that so we can figure out who's out about. Obviously, you're, you know, it's legit. You live up here, that type of thing. But at least we know now who you are and we can move you on. So, mm -hmm. so that, that's where that education thing comes in, right? I have no problems talking to people and just letting them know what we're doing and why we're doing it. And, you brought up cold code, the code red. What do, what do we do as a city for new people moving into town? To it's on the website, yeah, I think, yeah. but we haven't sent out a letter. Right. We haven't sent we, out something in Horace Happenings right. for, what, about a year, I think? We, we, just, last fall. we, just, we just, just said this new Okay, I haven't gotten it yet, so, all right. Mm -hmm. yeah. We just said in Horace Happenings, it took to come up about annually uh, within, like, a newsletter. That's my understanding. Maybe that's something we should do yeah. separate as a mailer or something to, you know, when we start billing them, you know, we have addresses and stuff. Like somebody, if we know that there's a new resident, yeah. if there's a newsletter that yeah. has information, you know, the parking. Yeah, maybe we can, yeah, maybe we can put together a new resident newsletter that has Absolutely. kind of pieces like that and when you send them their new bill for <laughs> water and it was separate, we could say it. Yeah, just send them a letter, welcome yeah. to Horace, and here's some information. That's a really good idea, and we have a new letter drafted because we've been working on sending it out to the whole county through the different cities. I think you guys are one of the first ones that we sent it out to. And we've kind of done some adjustments since then, so, um, you know, Ross and Jesse both have access to that. We want to upgrade that or whatever, but um, we weren't happy that it happened, obviously, when we had an incident south of town that you guys were involved in, right. but, it, but it also... We always try to learn something from Absolutely. things that we do wrong, and we did some things wrong there. <clears throat> and we definitely learned from it, and and so for that reason, it was good for us because we, we definitely learned from it. And well, we plus it helps our residents understand that there's this code red, and yeah, there was a zone issue that we had with it, but still, some of the people don't know we even had that. No. Yeah. So again, this is just bringing it to the forefront yeah, so good. that we can help out yeah. our residents know this stuff too. Yeah. So sure. So it was all good. Evan, you guys have anything else? Okay. Well, congratulations again. Yes. Yeah, yeah, thanks, thanks, yes. thanks for stopping out. I appreciate yeah, it. As you know, we're, we've got a, a uh, fellow employee that's suffering from leukemia, so we're trying to shave beards for no shave November to raise money for him. You know, to send my beard is a little greater from last time. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if that's uh, you know, the, the last time I was here. But. You think Jesse can grow one? No. <laughs> we, we already were giving him a hard time. I'm the same way. <laughs> yes, sir. Uh, the 911 vote did not go through. How do you see yeah. it impacting the city and sheriff towns? So I don't know if you guys know what he's referring to, but uh, you know, <laughs> the 911 system and our radio system didn't, didn't pass with the sales tax. And I don't know that it was marketed enough. It wasn't. People understood it. No. And apparently there's some laws with that and how much we can do with that, I guess. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's, of course, it came from different people in the sheriff's office, but, um, so yeah, now it, it looks like everyone's property taxes are going to go through the town pay for it. So, I mean, that's unfortunate because we want people <coughs> coming in this area to help pay for it with the sales tax. And I don't know how much I thought I read something like it was about twenty dollars per yeah. household or something. I think it's something like that. But so what it is is an upgrade to a radio system because the system that we have now is outdated. And uh, really, when we have radios and portables go down and stuff in our car, we go on eBay and look for parts for them. Our parts are slowly starting to dwindle, so we're trying to change over this. It's that system. only you got to go. Oh, oh, Motorola. Okay, DK. never mind. Yeah. Yeah. Motorola is not going to change some of their equipment anymore, right? You, I know. Yeah. They'd be interested to know that when our guys are out on calls, a lot of different areas in the county, our portable is going to work. Unfortunately. It's like half the city of Castles of the yeah. little work. And even it's like inside castle. schools sometimes and things like that. Just just it. So with this new armor system, we'll be able to talk apparently from Tower City to people in Minneapolis as strong as it is. Building won't be a problem, so I mean, it'll definitely be a good upgrade. Yeah. It's just expensive to do. So. 
get it happen. Yeah. All right. Anybody got anything else? No. Otherwise, cool. Thank you. Thank you for coming. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Next up, we have the audit presentation. Who's got the okay? Uh, hey. uh, sorry if I could uh, intersect here. Um, you go ahead. Tracy, I apologize yeah. for not putting your name on the agenda, oh. but this is Tracy Bittner. She's a managing partner with Widmer Rolls. So um, there you have it. Well, thank you. <laughs> okay. Thank you for the promotion. Oh. <laughs> Tracy, what was the last name again? Or what it's was a Bittner. B U E T H N E R. It's not as exciting as Matt Waller, unfortunately. Yeah, that's, all right. <laughs> that's okay, though. Anyway, welcome. Thank Come you. on here. Thank you. Ready for me to start? Go ahead. Go ahead. All right. Yep. Well, first of all, thank you. Um, as I mentioned, I'm Tracy Bittner. I'm the engagement partner, um, an audit partner at Widmer Roll. And with me is somebody that you probably do recognize, and that's uh, Paige Carlson. Uh, she may have been under a different name when was you uh, <laughs> <laughs> last met her. So, um, I have to give uh, Paige a lot of uh, thanks. She was the in charge of the audit engagement, which I know is the most exciting thing that you have on your agenda tonight. <laughs> um, but um, our team, uh, we, we do have a team, and that includes Tanner Sacrismo, uh, P uh, Brian Clark, and Kirsten Copsing. So they all worked on the audit, and we appreciate that opportunity to, to work with you. So tonight, I'm just going to give you um, <coughs> sort of a brief overview, unless there's specific questions. Um, you know, we're, we're almost at uh, Thanksgiving, and the audit does cover through 1231.17. So just sort of a brief overview, and then uh, questions as you, as you um, may have. Um, so we'll just do a brief overview. And as this is the first time that we've been asked to come forth to council, I am going to just give you a brief overview of the type of things that we do in an audit. Um, we'll go through the results. And um, that then we'll move into some of the findings as a brief overview and uh, communication with those charged with governments. So why, why are we here? So an audit is required um, by the North Dakota statute. Um, so for a, a municipality is required to have an audit every two years when their receipts exceed $200,000. So um, you are you can have an audit annually, but at least every two years. Um, the audit is submitted to the North Dakota State Auditor's Office. And one of the unique things, some of you I know are business owners or work in the business community, is that an audit done for the city of Horace is also performed under, under government auditing standards, otherwise known as the Yellow Book. And I, um, I'm, I'm just going to pause for a second. So I do apologize. It was my fault getting this late to advance. But the, the pre I'm just going through the PowerPoint presentation, yep. and that I will reference the materials. Okay. So, but he does now have a copy for your records of what we have distributed. So for government auditing standards, some of you may have re recall that's called the Yellow Book. And um, when you have an audit done under the Yellow Book. That means there's some additional procedures, including writing a report on the consideration <coughs> of internal control over financial reporting, um, reporting the results of um, tests with compliance with certain provisions of laws, regulations, contracts, and grants. A Yellow Book audit also requires a schedule of findings with responses to be presented. And then for our team at Widmer Roll, we're required by the Yellow Book to have a certain amount of training that qualifies. And also we have to evaluate our independence also individually as well as the firm. And then the other, the other thing I'd like to mention just overall is there's um, the government-wide financials versus the fund-level financials. And I just would like to remind you that what you see most of the time is at the fund level. So the fund level is by fund. So you have your general fund, your um, highway users fund. And when you're reporting on the fund level, that means you're looking at everything in either that period or very short term. That, that's what you're used to seeing. However, GASB requires that 
um, there is what is referred to as a government live presentation. So it's almost converting everything to an accrual basis. So long-term liabilities are recorded, long-term receivables, and if you had your fixed assets, there would be your, your fixed assets would be shown on the government wide. So when you reviewed your, your financial statements, the first couple of statements at the beginning are the government wide or converted, that shows your long-term obligations. And then, then it goes into what you're used to seeing on the fund level. So it can get a little convoluted sometimes when you're reading these reports. So um, just to, you know, an audit is a, an independent assessment of your activity for that particular period of time. And so as I mentioned, we're already independent, but we perform certain procedures. It is not a 100% verification. If we were, you would have to probably, you know, set aside a, a cubicle or a space for us to be here all year round. But we do do confirmations with independent parties and the state. Uh, we inspect documents and source doc. Uh, uh, we, we inspect records and source documents. We perform analytical procedures based on what we expect to see. We read through the minutes. I, I guess we and we can watch them online now too, or your your um, meetings. Uh, so we do read through that. We see what's going on, and then we we look at that and compare that to the results of. Is this what we're expecting to see and what is discussed? Um, we re-perform certain activities and recalculate numbers. We look at significant estimates. We observe and inquire. Some of you um, were involved in that inquiry <coughs> process. Um, we use a, a software called Teammate Data Analytics where we can download information and perform additional tests or have the system pull out unusual transactions. And again, we, we um, are always discussing things, either Brenton, Vance, or for you during the audit. Any questions so far? No. Nope. Okay, so just to give you a brief overview of the auditor's report, and again, this is a little convoluted, especially if you have an audit done for your own business. Um, so I will remind you that the audit was for a two-year period of time, December 31st, 2017, and 2016. Management's responsibilities are clearly stated where management is responsible for the preparation and the fair presentation of the financial statements, as well as for the design, implementation and maintenance of internal control. So we cannot be a part of the control system. We can only evaluate it and identify issues. Our responsibility is to ex express an opinion on the financial statements and have reasonable, and to provide reasonable assurance that the financial statements are free from material misstatement. And we're also responsible for selecting the procedures. Certainly, if anyone ever has a um, something they'd like to look at um, or for us to look at, we take those inquiries and, and incorporate that into our audit steps. So the auditors, we have to report on the government-wide financials, which I talked about are really the ones that are converted more to an accrual basis. And then we have to report on all the, fund, um, the funds as well. So basically, uh, with the exception of the areas affected by capital assets, um, the opinion is unmodified for the various funds. However, for those funds, uh, funds and activities that would have had capital assets, um, we issue what's referred to as an adverse opinion, just because it's not reported in accordance with, with GAAP. And so that's going to affect your government-wide, again, your conversion to accrual basis um, activities, your business type of activities because of the, uh, the water and sewer fund, and then specifically the water and sewer fund. Everyone's good? Okay. Um, and Paige is going to just give a very brief overview of the journal entries that were, were posted. All right. So the... Adjusting journal entries are um, abbreviated to AJEs, which are the fund level adjustments that we've made. Um, the amounts that are included here are um, rather high, and that is due to um, 
the soft accounting software that is currently being used by the city, not having cash general ledger accounts for all of the funds. <coughs> where we would normally see if a revenue or disbursement was recorded in one of your capital project funds or a debt service fund, it would uh, increase or decrease the cash in that account. Um, so because there's only one cash general ledger account, we had to make adjustments to, or we proposed adjustments to um, adjust that activity to properly state the revenues and expenses that you would have had in the debt service and capital projects funds. There's also RJEs, which are reclassifying journal entries. So that would be reclassing your loan proceeds for the state revolving funds that you received in 2017. Um, the interest portion of debt payments. So in previous years, it's been recorded all as principal. And for a financial statement presentation, we have to break out principal and interest in any other fees that you would have had during the year. Um, and also reclassifying the current portion of debt. So on the government-wide financial statements, you would identify um, your total loan liability, but then also what you're expected to pay in the next year. Um, we also have GASB journal entries, is what they're abbreviated, or government-wide journal entries, and those record the long-term debt and notes receivable and are not recorded in the city's accounting software. What about the other one that you didn't have any adjustments? What's PA journal? Uh, past adjusting journal entries. So that would be, we have materiality levels for each of the funds. So if we found a difference that wouldn't um, materially affect your financial statements but could have been made a, as an adjustment, we just um, provide it in case it is something that you choose to make. Okay. So the next couple of slides are just a five-year activity of of basically what's been happening in some of the, the funds. And it's really sort of exciting because um, these graphs sort of show the results of what's happening here um, in the city and the growth and uh, that's happening. So with the general fund activity, uh, we're finding that the activity you know, is consistent from year to year with the revenues and the expenditures. And um, the primary sources of revenues impacting the general fund are going to be from your taxes, licenses, and permits, and intergovernmental revenues. And your expenditures are for the public safety, which um, you know you obviously address tonight, as well as general government. Um, if you're looking at the slides, the blue represents the the the, uh, the assets of the general fund, which are going to be primarily the cash and very liquid assets. And um, if you recall, the general fund had some transfers out to some other funds. So that's why you see the So difference. that's what I was going to ask, why that decreased was yeah. just a transfer. Yep, <coughs> exactly. Yep. Uh, the highway fund activity, um, again, this is dependent on the states in terms of uh, what they allocate to the city of Forest each year. Red are the revenues, um, green are the expenditures. And in this particular case, you can see the steady increase in cash, and that's um, due to there's been no major projects involving those um, highway user funds. Debt service, um, moving on, um, in 2017, you're going to see the impact on the assets due to the, the special assessment revenue bonds that were issued um, in the amount of $5.8 million. So um, again, you can see the activity has been, from a revenue and expenditure standpoint, has been fairly consistent over the last couple of years. Um, but this year, you know, with those revenue bonds, you can see the difference in cash. Capital projects um, activity, this to me is where you can really see what's going on in terms of what you have to do for infrastructure um, in the city. So in 13 and 14, there's basically no capital project activity. And you can start to see in 2015 that um, you know um, loan and bond proceeds start to come in to the city and then um, a number of those developments have started um, construction, both in 15 and obviously in 17. So the, one question on the assets, what, what is it considered an asset in that capital project fund? You know, that would be the cash account. Okay, so that there's, I don't think there's CDs. So that would no. be a, that would be a temporary cash that's being held <laughs> while the debt is being serviced yep. and so forth. 
Okay. So right. that would yeah. be, it's a temporary holding. That would be our bond, so that the payment we get, and then that is an ending. And that goes out. That's going to go out over time, right. so you're just stating okay. at the end of right. 2017, we had approximately $2 million of money that we were going to pay out to um, okay. activities. Good. Right? Yeah. All right. Yeah. Yeah. That makes sense. All right. Yep. Thank you. Okay, good. I was wondering that too. <laughs> <laughs> well, good. No, these are it's good to get questions because then we know what to include in other presentations. So, the water and sewer fund, um, if you recall, in 17, you have the state revolving loans of um, what, $2.0 um, yeah. million? Dollars. Yeah. So, the red is liabilities in this situation. So, that's why there's the huge increase. Um, the um, and then the, the green is the revenues, and that looks, you know, for me, sort of flush, and I know that's probably one thing you're looking at with, you know, the increased number of um, residents in moving out and fees, you know, assessed there. So, you know, just based on the activity, I would expect to see that amount increase in the future. So question on this. So this is for the sewer line? Is that the debt related to the sewer line to Fargo? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So why is that under water and sewer when it's a capital project? I guess that's what I'm curious. Why we would classify it under water and sewer fund? Because isn't water and sewer fund our operation of our water and sewer and any of the, I guess, yeah, I'm curious why that's constituted there. My understanding of the loans were that they were going to be repaid with the fees that were collected from the meter replacements and the increased fees. So the meter replacement one, I guess I could see that one. That's but is this one including our sewer line? Is my question. Typically, you would classify if you were doing a capital improvement under the utilities, then it would fall under expense tied to the utilities. Okay. So if we did improvements to the sewer lines, water lines, meters, all those different areas, mm -hmm. it should Close be reflected in the utility fund as a separate animal. It gets a little confusing with the capital projects, but okay, well, I just, it's a capital pro there, there really are two different capital projects, the mm -hmm. infrastructure and then the utility infrastructure. Just to have a dramatic increase yeah. in our liabilities in one year like that, somebody yeah. would look at that and go, what the heck did we do? But we yeah. have to be able to state that a lot of that was a taken uh, is a project, but we're also going to pay it off with either special assessments yeah. or that sales tax revenue and not fees to our, because that's what I would think it is, is it's fees to our residents are going to pay to pay off that mm -hmm. debt, and that's not all of that is going to be paid by that way. That's all I was yeah. concerned about. Okay. And then uh, <laughs> with the infrastructure, too, uh, the plan from my last meeting with Vance is for the 2018 audit, we're planning to include capital assets. Um, so we'll do procedures for the initial year of implementing that. Um, and then we'll, since those three projects are paid, or are funded with the state revolving loans, we will include that as a capital asset which will offset that liability okay. so yeah. okay good okay, so it, it, won't, it just doesn't look quite so right yeah it doesn't right. look very right. good in one right. year here that we have this huge right. increase without a offset of mm -hmm. liability of something to pay for okay yeah one thing to remember about the water and sewer fund and i think brett did a really good job it is treated almost like a business so if if you um mm -hmm. have the assets that's where they go the debt goes with that okay. as well so okay. yeah. as long as in time our sourcing our where that where the revenue for, for paying off that that's going to come from is in this graph, then it looks fine to me. I guess it's in the future right. we're working to separate sure all the utilities, so you'll see truly where that debt is. Okay, but it's going to take years to be able to have that properly reflected. Okay, so, yeah. we're moving in the right direction. <laughs> that's good. Okay. good questions. Any other questions so far before we move on to the communication letters? So as a part of the audit, we are, um, as I mentioned too, it's a yellow book audit, so we are required to um, issue a schedule of findings and responses. Um, additionally, we issued um, a communication of some other matters and then also issued a communication to those charged with governance. And I'm gonna start with the schedule of findings and responses, and that is included in your primary audit package. So we, we have, um, we evaluate findings and first of all start off with the deficiency and then we determine should it be ver just verbally discussed, should we put it in writing, and then how should we elevate it to, do we want to elevate it to a significant deficiency or to a material weakness. And um, so we have determined uh, through our, our evaluation 
that there's uh, there's four material weaknesses. The first being the capital asset records or fixed asset records, infrastructure records um, that that traditionally has not been recorded. And I know you're in the process and um, going back to gather all that information to properly record that um, in the some of those assets um, in the in the water and sewer fund will then be depreciated. Um, those that are in the governmental funds, um, that will be it will depend on the type of asset if it's uh, de, you know depreciated or not. Um, the segregation of duties. The simple fact is you have a small staff, um, and really the reason why we bring this to your attention is the. The, the best thing is to be aware of what's going on, to ask questions, review those invoices that are presented. Um, you know, when you see your internal reports, if something looks unusual, ask the question. So, um, it, um, you know, and, uh, so we do look at that entire segregation of duties and then also, you know, recommend if it's possible to cross train, uh, like with Medea here and all and stuff, you know, to make sure that somebody else knows how to do um, we did post several um, audit adjustments, you know, during the audit, and we had to go back and adjust the beginning fund balance. And Paige, can you just speak a little bit more on that? Um, is that part to the system? Yeah. The, the uh, <coughs> software? Right, how the accounting software was set up in previous, or back when it was originally set up, and um, just the functionality between the fund activity not happening necessarily in that fund, it would pull cash from the general fund. So it was just reallocating mostly. And then um, in prior years, we haven't been able to go back into years and report the proposed audit adjustments. So that wouldn't allow our beginning numbers to match what BAMP is able to pull from the accounting system. But um, with discussions with BAMS and looking at the board minutes, the Black Mountain Accounting software has been approved to be purchased and implemented April 1. Yes, that's, that's our schedule, so, yep. So with that, uh, it sounds like Vance and are doing a lot of work to make sure that everything is set up on the get-go and get started on the right foot. I guess I would make a statement that's just a setup in our financials. We should be able to create the accounts and create claims and make the adjustments now. Correct? Am I thinking wrong, Brian? I mean, it's a cash account. We can just create additional yeah. GL accounts. I mean, we, could, we could, if that would simplify some of the transition, would that help? You should think of it that way. Uh, from the transition from the accounts we have today yeah. in Great Plains to the account structure that we would be using in Black Mountain, could we make those account changes? I'm assuming now is not a good time. Beginning of the year would. Yeah, I was going to yeah. say. January would be the time yeah. to make those changes so that. It, makes that transition to the new account structure in Black Easy. Mountain easier. Mm -hmm. Yeah, easier. Yep. So we're having, maybe getting a jump start on some of the resolution of some of the issues. Yeah. Is that even possible? I guess I'm asking the question. Um, I'm not sure as far as, when you want to start me <laughs> Well, in the past, um, I've been, on, once a year is closed in GP, I've never been able to go back and make adjustments. I right. don't know how to do that, and uh, someone has never provided me with the correct information on how to go about I, that. I don't think you can. Yeah, think you that's, can. That was, I think that's always I'm been saying, the I'm saying for the, the 2019 going forward, can we make oh, yes. uh, yeah. structure changes yes. that were needed for Black Mountain? Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. not going back, so oh, can we right. adjust the, the starting balances in the account mm -hmm. structure? Right. To do the allocation the way you're suggesting, yes, right. that can be done. Starting January one, right? Not going back, <clears throat> right? And right. what the auditors have done before is they adjust the original trial balance, offsetting those entries that are that I was unable to make. Mm -hmm. Right. right. So, yeah, you're opening so, you're opening balances for the exactly. Yeah, so we, so we can get those right. the way we want them to be when we make the transition over. That's the <coughs> I think we should. Yeah. Trying to focus yeah, on that. Yeah. Yeah. Best case scenario. Yeah, yep. and I agree. I think January one is the appropriate starting date because that starts your calendar year. Right. Here. So. right. Yep. Okay. okay. Um, we also do prepare the financial statements as a matter of convenience. Uh, government auditing standards really looks at that. They they think every community, everyone who's subject to an audit, should be able to prepare their own financial statements and. Um, 
uh, we just find typically with our clients that's just not extremely practical. So what we expect is that the financial statements are reviewed, the journal entries are reviewed, you're reading the notes, and making sure that those are that the information that we've gathered is properly stated in the financial statement. Um, budgets, uh, we um, we noticed that there is not a, an annual budget for the debt service fund and some of the general fund accounts. So you may just want to go back and make sure that you're, you know. Um, I would like to say that those aren't required by the state, but it's just a good internal monitoring, so you yeah. have an idea of where you'll be at the end of the year if you decide to make any transfers between mm -hmm. uh, The special assessments, um, all the special assessments were recorded, um, as Paige mentioned, to um, a one fund, but principal and interest payments are being made from each debt service fund. So, um, that just needed to be allocated across all the debt service funds in advance. I think you're already working on that. That's, you bet. Yep. Got a good handle. So you on state right you're now. making you would make a an account for each debt service. So give an example, I guess like say Maple Lane that's gonna be a special assessment, it would have its own principal and interest account. Correct. And all the others would be the same way, but then I'm assuming we'd roll those all up to one for us reporting. I mean I don't want to say that. Minutia, yeah, but we would roll that up in a yeah. report to say this yeah. is our total debt servicing. Yeah. Yes, yeah. so that exactly. Okay. You you would see it as one line item, right? Unless you want to see yeah. the drill the down version. The details. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. if we had it up on a spreadsheet, you say you want to see details, we unhide those columns and boom, it's right around. Yeah, group on group. Yep, okay. Yep. And also there was a capital project fund that was being used, um, uh, not in the correct way it should have been in a debt service fund. So it sort of ties in with that. Okay. And then at the time when we were doing the audit, we noticed that um, the Horace Park District loan repayment was a little delinquent. And so we just wanted to make sure we brought that to your attention because then it should be being assessed to see if it's collectible or um, if it needs to be written off or some other terms, but just want to make sure that you're aware of that. We also issued some other, um, what we refer to as other matters, and again, this is a recommendation, certainly not required, um, you know, to consider budgeting for uh, the uh, water and sewer funds, because um, that will give you an idea if you're tracking on what you expect based on your population and can evaluate any significant variances. That is not re required, though. There were some deficit fund balances, and again, I think in part that's due to the software and in terms of how things are being recorded, but there, it is required that the financial statements include a paragraph on that what is happening with those deficit funds. So um, and we hope that that will all be cleaned up, um, especially moving to the new software. Well, yeah, that's, uh, you know, that's something that I've always, well, it wasn't set up Right. originally for fund accounting mm -hmm. so I've just had to work around with the best I yeah. could of course but I think uh, when we have the discussion a year from now with Black Mountain things will look a lot different. Yeah. So that was actually one of my questions Vance. I know we talked about this quite a few times but those accounts that have been sitting out there that's that's what you're talking about right now right those accounts that have been sitting out there that have had no transaction to them for a long time and some of them have pod slid mm -hmm. A small battle, positive down, some negative, but it, they've just been sitting on the books and we just need to dispose of them so those accounts, so to speak, right? That's what you're talking about. Yeah. And, and so is that, will that happen now through this year in process? Some of those accounts will get either adjusting well, entries or something to close those out? Or have, have, I think we have, we've got the handle on that, right? Yep, we've identified yeah. the funds that the right. projects are no longer occurring or that the bonds have been paid off. So there right. should be any. Okay, so that, that will be a beautiful thing, right? To get those off, wow. finally off your books, right? Because yeah. they, they've um, just been hanging around for years in some cases. Oh, absolutely. <clears throat> I've never been one to write anything off without... But there have been no transactions in some of them for a, quite a while, well, so it's like we're just carrying them around for... Ab absolutely. No, they're creating more confusion than they are helping. Yeah. So I, if, this, if this is the time to do that, that's, that's great. We're going to get to that. That's awesome. Yeah. 
And from my standpoint, I, I know Paige has, um, yeah. Vance has reached out and Paige has been helping um, awesome. provide some Great. recommendations yep. on what to do with that. So, and on a going forward basis with the new reporting, it should be easier to monitor that and then ask those questions. Well, I thought we were done with this project and why right. is it still there, so. And I, th I think, in a, you know, to summarize the whole thing, I, I will be working with Widmer Road, to, you know, and look forward to their guidance on how to yep. move into this mm -hmm. because that's what they do. Yeah, absolutely. No, I agree. The changes that we need to make, well, we need to do it yep. the right way. And, you know, one thing to keep in mind, too, <coughs> there's been a lot of changes, you know, going on here mm -hmm. with different funds now required to be set up and, and monitored and everything. So this is a, a great time to get to work towards getting that cleaned yeah. up with the transition Great. to the new software, so. You've been talking about some of these accounts for two years. Mm -hmm. You wouldn't want well, to get off the books. Longer than that, <laughs> 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 um, One of the other things that we noted, and um, it just hit because of timing, though at one time you were required to review um, the, the pledge agreements for you know the funds in excess of the, um, uh, FDIC. And, uh, but that requirement was removed in the prior legislative period, but it sort of affected the 16 in terms of what we saw. So you don't have to worry about that anymore, so. But we do have to do it annually. I think it's recommended that you do it annually. Is it a requirement, did you say? Or? I'd have to double check. Okay. Yeah. Whether, whether it is, I still think that's a positive thing. I think well, that's a good yeah. thing for us to yeah. do. Because we know then where our excess dollars yeah. are being kept and right. Is, is there still that two hundred and fifty thousand dollar plus or minus? Sure. Right. Is that that's still correct, yep. right? Uh, yep. So, but if if you have like five accounts at Bell, for example, you have to yeah. look at the entire balance correct. by yeah. account. It's all the accounts being held with one institution. Yes. Okay. So anything over that is required to have pledged securities, and it's based on the book balance. I'm sorry. The bank balance, not the book balance. Right. So um, you could have some in transit items, but we, even though it doesn't have to come forth to you twice a year, we still recommend that those pledged security reports are reviewed when they're received to make sure that um, the financial institution maybe hasn't reduced the securities. When I, I used to work in Arizona, and, um, they, uh, one of the institutions actually reduced the pledge without getting approval and it turned out to be a compliance issue because they just weren't aware of what was going on in the city. So I would hope that there's some communication if they want to make a change or something. But you should at least be reviewing that. <coughs> um, so if you know just a couple of key takeaways, you know, um, you're you're working on the fixed assets, which is an admirable major project, believe me, especially when you're talking about infrastructure in place. Um, we want to make sure the audit entries get recorded, you know, as, as, as much as we can, and hopefully with the new system that will allow that those entries, if there are any, are, are booked appropriately. We want to make sure special assessments are reported to the appropriate fund. Um, with, with the training of, with the, the new software, um, and even the fixed assets, um, it, it may be, you know, I would probably, one of the recommendations, we had, it's more embedded with some of the findings, look at staff training, make sure the, they're getting the right training they need in the software, um, and as necessary, and some governmental um, CPE or training as well. And a lot of that is available through um, webcasts like through the GFOA. And then you might just want to review your budgetary process and determine what is most interest to you in terms of monitoring and seeing those budget to actual reports. So the final communication, and auditors and accounts, we love communications, you know, there's too many to keep track of, but we do issue a communication that's referred to as um, a communication to those charged with governance. Certainly you all meet that um, definition. So this is our letter to you to disclose anything that may not be appropriate in the audit or the internal communication letter. 
Uh, we do want to bring your attention that um, there was a new accounting policy adopted for the implementation of the fair value measurements, and that is primarily a disclosure issue within the financial statements. Um, there are some significant estimates in your financial statements, which include the long-term liabilities, as well as the fair value measurements. Once the capital assets are reported, that would be another significant estimate as you're um, evaluating um, the, the useful life you know, on the depreciable assets. We had, uh, we're pleased to say we have no difficulties with uh, management or anyone we worked with. And uh, we have provided um, schedules that have taken your unadjusted trial balance that and shows our journal entries and how they flow into the report. And it provided um, the um, audit adjustments which we made in the financials or, or reflected in the financials. So that was the extent of uh, my presentation. So we're certainly available for questions. And but I would like to make sure I give thanks to Vance, Matea, and uh, Breton for um, their assistance in providing information. Good information. Thank you. I have a question. Um, I'm assuming you do other cities similar to our size. We do a, a uh, governmentals. Yep. Yep. Okay. So it's not. We're not a. Um, my question is, uh, you know, reading through the report and looking at deficiencies and those types of things, um, would you say we are on par with other cities? Or are we um, below other cities? Do we have some improvements we need to do? What What would you give us as a, uh, I'll say, a grade or a recommendation or how well we did? Well, I can provide you the audit opinion that, uh, that talks about the financials. I think, you know, obviously looking at the internal reporting, so you're getting, um, you, you, you want to be able to take a look at your audited financial statements, and it's similar to what you're used to seeing, especially at the fund level, mm -hmm. on your internal financials. And so I think, you know, with the combination of advanced um, um, working on some of the items that we discussed as well as moving to a software that is going to provide better reports. I, I hope that will help. There shouldn't be surprises when, by the time you get to an audit. Um, we do feel the people that we were working with were knowledgeable about what were, was going on. Certainly the information was available. It's um, Governmental accounting can be somewhat complex, and that's why we suggested maybe some training. However, in regards to the size, that's probably very similar, you know, to other organizations and um, governmentals of this size. It's, it's all hands on deck, mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. so to speak. Um, but also the fixed assets. Um, you know, that's a tricky one because, you know, uh, it can be very time consuming to go back to capture all of that information in order to report it appropriately. So that's where you have to look at, is this adding value? Um, um, but that would change <coughs> the reflection of your financial statements if you have the, fi the fixed assets as well. Okay. But for certainly where you started, you know, it was very common not to report fixed assets for a smaller organization like this, so smaller okay. municipality. Okay. It's hard for me to give a grade though, but. Okay, um, well that's, no, <laughs> what you, that's fine. It, 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 I got the answer to what I wanted. And with the fixed, the growth that the city has experienced over the last three years, it's kind of hard to measure where you were in 2014 compared to right now. Mm -hmm. So what's kind of maybe in 2019, 2020, if it levels out or it will potentially keep increasing with the school getting passed now. Mm -hmm. um, it's just always adapting and growing and making sure that you have the procedures in place or work to implement the new policies to make sure that everything's addressed before you're... That's the concern is the complexity more. could potentially even get worse. So right. that's why getting things organized now is so critical, right? Because right. We, this is the calm before the storm. So we have to be well prepared, right? And that's where this is such a critical step for us to make sure that we're positioned for the next big phase. So. 
So we, I guess we that will, we, excuse me, we will be going through a yearly audit now too. So. Right. Uh, won't be any more two-year periods, so that should significantly help. So we'll actually reduce the overall effort each year then? We hope so. Because no, no. the financial statements and so forth will be more organized, so you'll be able to produce a lot of the needed documents that you need and the reports and so forth, so that overall the effort should be less. At least that's the goal, right? So that would be the other recommendation is what other, if there are other things that we should be doing to prepare for that, either, you know, infrastructure process tools, training, whatever it is, to reduce that overall effort. Yeah, we will um, keep that in mind. Uh, one of the things that I sort of look at as a baseline is what kind of adjustments are necessary for the audit. And I'm going to throw out the GASB adjustments because those aren't really, right. you know, that's for the government wide. But, you know, looking at those HAEs that affect the funds. So next year, if it's, um, you know, this year it was up to 14. Sometimes we throw sub entries, you know, but it's the matter of what do those entries reflect? and what is the overall net effect. That's a baseline that you can use to see um, where, the, <coughs> where the improvement um, is. Okay. And I, I know too, uh, Vance has been um, proactive in trying to get some things adjusted in 18 as well when he was going to set up, so. But yes, you, that is certainly a concern <coughs> with the growth and that's why providing education um, to those involved in the accounting function. And, um, you know, at some point, based on the needs and responsibilities, is it necessary to add more staff or to help with that to make sure reporting is being done timely? And that's not just at year end, but also monthly as well. Okay, just gonna come work for us full time, is that what you're saying? <laughs> <laughs> she laughs, it's a nervous laugh. <laughs> hey, always listen. No. <laughs> no. Um, but yeah, so you and I think it's good though that you're aware of that because those are the type of questions that you should be, you know, asking of Brenton and Vance, you know, in in your your um, your regular council. And asking how are you dealing with the new school or that type of thing. So. Anybody got any other questions here? I don't have any questions. I guess I can only reference now and talk about the audit itself. I don't have unless there's other questions. No, no. I'm just going to leave some business cards on the front desk too. If you guys have any questions, you can feel free to email or call. Maybe not this week, but <laughs> <laughs> after that. You may not prepare for I on Friday. <laughs> I will not do that. Okay, fair enough. <laughs> <laughs> I guess I just wanted to state that uh, I understand that, uh, yeah, thank you for your presentation. Very helpful. I appreciate it. And I want to thank the staff for all the work they did. I know it's a tough thing our business. It's a very it's a year long thing to go through audits, and I'm going through an IT audit right now at work. Um, but. I noticed that based on our material deficiencies or other things that we stated that Black Mountain was going to be the key to this. And I just want to state that that is not the only thing that's going to solve this. There is no silver bullet with a software system. Just as you stated, advanced, there's a number of setups that weren't done in Great Plains, that kind of stuff to solve what you were dealing with. There's no guarantee we're going to get those done in Black Mountain. So I would like to make sure we have a plan that we adjust, reset, refine our financial statements the way we need, we need by January 1 so that we can make this transition a lot easier. So if we have to restructure our financials or add accounts or do anything like that, we get that done so then in January 1 we can start tracking. The second piece would be procedures that we have for accounting for all of this, which I'm assuming they're recommending for us to do and those types of things are in place as well so that we can start tracking properly, which will make our transition easier. And um, that to me is going to be the critical things to make sure that this is successful. And the other thing is um, not to, you know, that since it is my job and I do this on a large scale, not to push it. We, it's going to be a lot of work to get to this by April 1, a significant amount of work for all of us included. So, and I know I have said that uh, Brian and I and Brent and Vance as needed would meet to try and discuss a plan and that kind of stuff, so we're here to help. But it's going to be a significant amount of work. 
and I know that there are a number of deficiencies that were on here multiple times, meaning multiple years. I, I really don't want to see those again is my other thing, so we need to address this and get it taken care of. So thank you. Appreciate it. Do we need to be prepared for, and no knock against our staff at all, but for additional outside help? Any of this or? I think we'll have a discussion, and it sounds like Vance is working with uh, them to try and you know hopefully get a better financials. And I know we've had discussions with Brent, but yeah, there might be. But I like the information of the additional training. If there's additional training we need to do, let's yeah. think about that. In, in talking with Dave, uh, it'd be after we assess what we really want, what what we really need additional help with, then we may come back and say, okay. We really see a benefit of pulling in this expertise for this other one. So we may be bringing that forward. Uh, it's just seeing what gorilla we're taking on. You know, what's the how, how big is the transition to getting things set up for Black Mountain? Apparently, so we're looking at a couple different avenues. So. Well, we've done well bringing in extra consultants or help yeah. when needed. Let's not. Yeah, we're Be not going to be shy about again. it because yep. we want to no. make sure that we get it right. It's, it's, all, so. it's all for the good. Mm -hmm. yep. It's not a knock on anybody. It's making sure yep. there's a lot of things that have changed. And, okay. and that should be able to expand as the growth continues right. to whatever is set up. So, sorry, I didn't mean to. No, yep. absolutely. So. <laughs> all right. Anybody got any other? Otherwise, uh, thank you for coming out and presenting thank for you. us this evening. Thank you. Okay, so moving on to the next. Jim, you want uh, transportation? Grant? Yes, Mr. Mayor and Council. I don't know how you expect me to follow that presentation. <laughs> to my path. Yeah, try, man, yeah, try. Go from accounting to engineering. <laughs> two thumbs up. All right, so the first thing we have on the agenda is the Transportation Alternative Grant application. I've been working on this with Councilwoman Johnson. She's been working on getting support letters, and I've been updating the application. <coughs> Thankfully, it is very, very similar to last year, so it's been a matter of tweaking a couple things here and a couple things there. They make some changes just to make sure you read the application again, so I yep. did that. Um, I do have a map up there just showing you the purpose. Which, which uh, extension? Uh, try it. Is there going? Nope. It's, brand Pro new. it's project location. Man. There you go. That brand sounds better. Yep. Uh, Can I make a recommendation? I know we kind of talked about this, but all of these documents that are going oh, in this starting next meeting, can we have them tagged with a number yep. that they relate to so that make it easier for Brian and everyone? We do have, we did get the software now, Adobe, uh, the Adobe Pro professional setup, so we should be able to be doing that. And even the name, I mean, just yeah. even the file names yeah. would be ordered then to make it easy for Brian to find yeah. so. So at the last council meeting, we decided the council decided to extend the line from the proposed, or I shouldn't say the proposed, the first phase that it starts at the school and goes north to 71st Avenue there. And uh, we would start there and continue, or uh, is that 81st, 81st, I'm sorry, and continue north to 76th Avenue. So that is the project that we are preparing and that's the project we are putting putting in for. Applications are due to Metro Cog by December 3rd. I know Chelsea's been working with, working on getting support letters and that's pretty much all we really need. I looked through the numbers on our last estimate and they were uh, uh, very good numbers with the bidding environment that we're seeing so far. So no real change there, just a little bit. I upped some culvert prices just to make sure that we had enough in there for the culvert too. So, so the shared use path we have, or the grant we have so far, covers from the 81st South, right? Correct. And I checked on that today, and I will read you these emails because they're kind of fun. <laughs> <laughs> so I reached out to the, I forget what the guy's name is, Kevin Stankowitz with the North Dakota Park and Rec, and he is the one who we've been in contact with about the status of grants. And when last I talked to him, <laughs> he had said that he would keep us in touch. So I sent him an email today asking for an update, and the response I got back was, um, I am no longer with the North Dakota Park and Rec Department. It has been my pleasure working with recreational professionals, grant project sponsors, bikeway community leaders, and state federal partners. For assistance, please contact Matt Gardner. So I contacted Matt Gardner. Got a response back. Matt Gardner's no longer with the North Dakota Park and Rex either. 
wow. and they gave me three more people's names. So a bulk of it is we will look into this and get back to you. That's what I got out of them. So it's gone nowhere. Sure fell off. So once I hear something back from them, I will let you know. But, um, so I thought that was kind of interesting when I reached out to one person, got told to go to another person, and then they were gone. So I'm not sure if it's retirements, buyouts, or what. But they got they, <laughs> yeah. uh, so, so anyways, when I hear more about that, I will let you know, and we can, we can go from there. But we had the money. We just needed to be obligated by the FHWA. Um, Kevin never got back to us. I know he was going to keep me in the loop and, and Vance. And so. so this was a submission that was due this fall? Is oh, which one was that? Well, this... this The red line? Yes. The red line is due December 3rd to okay. Metro Cog for construction in 2020. Okay, right. So... Yeah, you were gone when we talked about it, but when I talked to Jim originally, I was really wanting to do something with Wall. But since Wall is kind of up in the air as far as um, repair for other reasons, we elected to just continue this one. Sure. And um, it links on to the one that Barry gave us, so it's a great. Um, there are going to be pedestrian facilities on the roundabout. They're being constructed right. with it, so the crossing. So this would tie into the roundabout. Correct. Right there. Yeah, and if this is this would be done in 2020, the roundabout is constructed for set okay. schedule for 2019 construction. So as long as the design is it would have something to something to, to something to tie into, and then there is potential for putting a bike path along 76th from 17 to the school. This way. Correct. It would, yeah, okay. And there's potential to go to the go to the west too if need well, be. Well, but well, since we're going to have to reconstruct 76 anyway, mm -hmm. the bike path would be included in that project. Probably be an alternate, just oh, the way of looking sure. at it. It, okay. it. it certainly would be looked at. It's 76 is still in the preliminary design with right. the county right. doing right. that. So, um, if it's something that the council wants to go for, it certainly can be included. We're going to have to pay for portion of that anyway. So you got to pay for most of it. On 76, I didn't hear, that I didn't is. Hear you say portion. I didn't hear you say all. <laughs> well. Okay, sorry. So, so the grant is a 20% match. Right. With the, and then the engineering isn't covered. But the 76 stuff, there's quite a bit that you, the city will be on the hook for, if not all of it. So. There's other grants. There are. And this would be a this would be a candidate for a TA grant again, or a, even get a portion of it. Yep. Yep. Agreed. Okay. Yep. I agree. Remember, That's Matt why it's Lauer's, good. Matt Lauer's going to be on board. So <laughs> yeah, we're good. We'll use the name recognition. Oh man, we're gonna, he, he's going to hate oh, us. Yeah. You know? Oh yeah. <laughs> he's going to show up the first day. And you think he hasn't been hearing this? I know. I know. I know. <laughs> I, know I know. But it's funny. <laughs> really. Okay. So that's that. Just a, just kind of a discussion item. Uh, the second I have is a request for an extension on the seal code on Northwood Southwood project. As you may recall, Aztec was the subcontractor doing the work on the Maple Grove project when the weather turned on them and they weren't able to get it complete. Uh, the same thing happened to Border States. They were using Aztec as their as their um, subcontractor to perform that work. They're going to do them at the same time. Weather didn't allow it. Project is is uh, operational. It's functional. Um, this would be. Uh, he didn't put a date on here, but I told him we would at least present it for consideration. Um, we did give until I think it was June, uh, middle of June, for the other project just to let the temperature get warm enough for the so seal code to be. He didn't specify. Or no, he didn't. Now that I see that, I'm so a surprise. So. Yeah, so but it, is, I suppose it's got to hit a certain temperature though. It does. It has to be 70 degrees. So <laughs> it all depends if you get an early summer, you get a late summer, or you know, yeah. a warm, a warm spring, fall, spring. Issue at hand. So I'm going to speak for John here. Mm -hmm. Are we going to get damage to this? On the because it's not sealed? oh no no it's not un, it's not untypical to seal coat it a year later or so. Okay. It, and that's water. And, I'm just worried about water. No moisture getting in there and breaking it up. No. A lot of places won't come back until a couple years after. Yep. Okay. So. We've found in the past that if we don't include it in the original project, it gets forgotten or it never gets done in the maintenance oh. cycle. So we've been including them in the okay. in the uh, projects to okay. set, make sure that that extra gets done. So, so Jim, I can't I can't help myself. Yes. <laughs> um, 
the way I look at this is Northwood and Southwood and Maple Grove, they were trying to do them all at the same time. Aztec correct? was correct. So they get better, they can work their project together internally and probably get the best deal. So and contractor sometimes. convenience? Yes, exactly. Yep. And I get they ran into some difficulties that I agree with, I don't always agree with at Maple Grove. Northwood and Southwood was a simple project. I agree. There's no reason why that shouldn't have gotten <clears throat> done. So if they want an extension, what's in it for us? Bottom line. I, I think this is just, it's kind of a BS deal. Sure. Well, we're, we should, are we holding their retainage? Yes, we do have retainage yeah. on them. We, so we, we, we have that until it hasn't the project's been done. Yeah. yeah, and we will hold that and until. And they aren't getting paid, so. And we aren't going to do it tomorrow. Right. Yeah, that much. So. It, Being I mean, in the business, I, I get all that dynamics, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. but you still have delivery dates. If it doesn't work, you better pay attention to your dates. Mm -hmm. I agree. You've got to hold people accountable to it. Well, if that's the case, then you would have to file a claim against them. And then the, the whatever the contract is, it probably says that there's a thousand dollars a day for missing the substantial completion date. But the issue is, if you're going to force them to that, hold hold them to the fire, are you going to get what kind of quality are you going to get from this project? It it's just it will it won't work. You they can't go out there and do it. Well, I th I think they burn their bridge of doing work in town too, to a point. I mean, that's the other part to. And that's they gotta be aware of that. That's something you'll think I mean, about. And the I, next I think time when it comes apply. bedtime, we have to pay attention to some of that. <clears throat> I'm not trying to be a complete ass about it. No, this is a different it, prime contractor than the Maple one. Yeah, it's just the same sub. They have yep. they, they are involved both. So. Right. One thing I do want to stress, and I understand your frustration, is if we do kind of crack down on contractors, what will happen? At least what I've seen uh, previous experiences has been. Uh, you'll get higher prices, higher bids, because contractors will put that in as a being cautious of dealing with the city. So, oh, because we're going to be accountable to them. Yep. Wow, that that's. I, I'm just that's, saying that's bull. I'm just saying as yeah, what I have yeah, seen I, experiences I of. And, I know it's frustrating to hear, but if we were to have occurrences like that happen over and over. They may start doing that. I'm not saying they would up here. So it's, not, it's wrong for us to request mm -hmm. decent pricing with a schedule that they set. That we're trying to hold them to the schedule they set. It's something we but we stress. have no car, yeah, whatever. It, it's something we stress. I'm just saying that it's something I've seen before. So it's just something we have to keep in mind. So there I'm not no saying increase. we can't. There yeah. is nothing. I mean, so let's say they come back next year and oil prices are up or whatever that kind of stuff. We're not. We're not yeah. accepting any change order I agree. costs or anything no, like that. Yeah, I agree. It's, 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 change it's, you're doing it at you're doing it at the at your bid price. Okay. Yeah. You're just doing a change of time. Yep. Right. Time. And that's as long as we're all in the same opinion that they come back and go, "Oh, my cost has gone up." That's when you have the listing of all the days they could have worked and things like well, that. Well, that's, that's with the maple one, but I, yeah. I agree. Yeah. This yeah. is this is north itself. <laughs> yeah. No, I will say I think there's got to be a better. Um, some sort of spreadsheet or something that we track. And I'm not trying to blame you, Jim, at all. But I think maybe there's got to be notice out there to these contractors that, hey, get it done. I mean, don't don't come in late. You know, I think what you're going to have to do then is just start putting claims against these contractors. That's what, that's why they're there. Why it's there. If you don't meet that substantial completion date, $1,000 a day. I think it also... Um, Timing is everything. So if we know that these projects are coming down the pipe, we want to start them earlier in the year so that they don't get pushed out. This wouldn't be an issue, right? And that one was. <laughs> yeah, that one. They yeah. delayed it. They they yeah. delayed it. They they played it up with Maplewood, Maple Grove, hundred percent, not a doubt in my mind. Uh, <laughs> so can then, we, it can rely, then it would kind of fall on like lesson learned. We're not going to work with these guys if that's how they're going to be. You, you know what? Some of the best people I work for are the strictest ones because you know exactly where you stand. And it, it just works smoother. You know, honestly, if that made sense to you, it just, mm -hmm. the hard-nosed attitude isn't such a negative. You know exactly where you stand at all the, all the time. You know what you have to do, and you know you're going to get paid at the end of the day. It's not that complicated to do business, folks. Mm -hmm. 
Can we table this and have let you guys do a little work on what can be done? Because I'm not going to I'm not going to approve anything, right? Well, I know I, you guys could without me, but um, I think it deserves a little more conversation. Maybe some uh, discussion on what we can do. But like we said, what can we do? Uh, just Counter with an offer of a discount for it. You know, we don't we don't want to be hard on those, but you guys blew your time. Do you think that it would be more so once they get it done, say here we're not paying you the full amount if you want to be well, that way? I mean, okay, I may be getting in trouble for saying this too, but so the assess this is an assessment, right? Yeah, both of these are, right? Yeah. When does the yeah. assessment go out to the people? And when does that start? Next year, right? Yeah, well, this one hasn't been assessed year. yet. Do it next year. Yeah. Okay, when do they start paying? <coughs> It'll be in our next tax. The year after. The next year. The year after. So it's two year, roughly two years two. out. Is it? Roughly. No, won't it, won't it be this one you'll have put on the books soon enough that it'll show up on the taxes we get yeah. in December of 2019? Yes. Okay, yeah. okay. Yeah. 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 So. yes. So they will pay in. We'll start paying right then and so when they get their bill in, in 2019, 19. these assessments. So will you're going to assess for a job that's not complete. No, no, it not until after. Not they'll be assessed okay. next year, a year from okay. this. So it won't be till next year. Not till when we get our tax bills next year. <coughs> but they've already taxes. gone through the detour and all that during the chip seal and all that, and now they're going to go through it again. It, it's a it's a day's worth of work. It, it's not a big inconvenience. It really isn't, but. Oh, uh, a day's worth of work that they couldn't fit in. <laughs> wow. That's it's, yeah. I, I, I won't make excuses for them. It just, I mean, the bulk of it is. There's got to be a price to pay on this one. As for options, Jim and I and Lucas, we could touch base. Yep. Yeah, yeah it's not going to get done tomorrow, so nope. you, you don't have it's, to. It's not like they're going to be out there tomorrow. It's going to be a, nope. at least a few months. So. All right, let's table yeah. this and get on with the thing here. We can just, you table? guys can come up with table. <laughs> if you got some ideas on that, that's fine. We'll table it for later. Okay, let's move on to 11. Jim, this is yours. Yeah, I know. I'm just <laughs> trying to catch up on my notes here. Uh, as you are all aware, there is street projects around a new school. If you didn't know, there's a new high school and middle school being built <laughs> on 76 Thank Avenue. you for the 411. So, in case anyone wasn't aware. <laughs> Thanks for the yeah. So, there's been a couple discussions. Apparently, a bond referendum was passed. So, it's going ahead. So, as part of that project, Lakeview Drive has been identified as a necessity. The district has been creative. It is in protest period right now for the improvements. Uh, the one thing that comes with that is an agreement for engineering services. This is so we can start working on, or not working on, but this is our agreement to work on that project. And we will work on the phases of this project as directed by the council. So right now we're working on the preliminary engineering report. Once the insufficient or sufficient protests have been received by the city at your next meeting, we'll either be directed to go ahead with the plans and specs or we will not, if, depending upon how that protest comes in. So with that, I just, Lucas has looked at it, Lucas has made his revisions on it, apparently he wants to look at it again. Well that's not the, what? You might have the original, that's not the revised one. Isn't this the one? You do this, don't you? Yeah, but that's not the same as that one. Uh, is there a Word document up there, Brian? Yeah, the word, there's a Word document up there. Go to the Word doc, that's the one that Lucas. Yes, blow that one apart. So this is street improvement. Okay. Oops. All right, never mind. So the word doc is the one that Lucas did? Yes. Yes. Okay. Yep, the word doc is the one that yep. And you're you're good with it, Lucas? Yep. Gotta be done. So um, I'll make a motion to approve the agreement for engineering services. Okay, so I make a motion, second by the uh, Brian. Uh, Real quick, what's do you have a rough estimate of the cost? Of I this? do, it's on the second to last page. Thank you. I think it's actually the third to last page. It's my mistake. This is just a schedule. No. Summary of estimated costs. 
and these are project costs, they would go into this improvement district, not in the general. Mm -hmm. <coughs> yeah, nothing gets done for free anymore, does it? Obviously. Mm. <laughs> so, you're saying, so you're saying the whole thing in the end is not to exceed the 123? Okay. All right. Thank you. Okay. Anything else? Otherwise, I'm going to ask for a vote. All in favor, say aye. 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 Okay. Yeah, so do we have to roll call this because we're spending money? It's just we should. Good. Should? Yes. All right. Roll call it then. John? Yes. Dave? Yes. Chelsea? Yes. Brian? Yes. All right. There we go. With that, I thank you for your time. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, Jim. Yeah. Thank you. All right, uh, on to 12, Brent, you're I'm, up. I'm not going to be as exciting as Jim on this one, apparently, but uh, this is more just to give council an update of one item that we're working on. Is, is a, at 12? No, no, this okay. is a discussion. Uh, one thing we're working on is uh, developing a snow removal and ice control policy. Uh, what we are modeling after is the city of Wapaton. The city of Wapaton has a very thorough uh, snow removal policy and ice control saying in these different conditions this is what you can expect. What is nice about it is if you have a complaint from anybody you can follow upon it saying hey here's the expectations that we're we're holding our staff to the city to so if we have you know a certain amount of snowfall or different types of conditions this is when the different activities are going to occur. Um, it does allow latitude where we could go above and beyond. It's just saying the minimum expectations. Right now, it's more of an informal, you know, verbal policy how what we follow. And the general guideline is about two inches of snow. That's when the crews would start going out. Where this would say, okay, we pay attention to intersections a little bit. If they're slick, we're going to go out. Uh, we have just started using sand into our mixture for salt sand instead of just doing straight salt at the intersections and throughout the street, all our streets. Um, the first snowstorm wasn't the strongest response on that, but the last couple I hope you have seen a little bit of a difference with at least seeing some of the sand out there. Helps improve visibility of showing the public we are out there, our crews are out there doing something. Uh, but like I said, this will help identify what streets will hit and what parameters when we'd be out having blades down, things like that. And so, they're going to prioritize the intersections that frequently get complaints. But one element within this policy would identify uh, different levels. So we'd say, okay, we're going to hit intersect these certain intersections or these certain roads first. Then when we're comfortable with these, then we're going to go to the secondary road. So you have like a primary road network and then a secondary road network. That way, you get the main streets going into town. Uh, also, identifying if there are certain agreements or who has ownership of certain roads, because we'll get complaints sometimes about, uh, like County Road 17. We'll get the complaint even though it's County Road. Now, should we be tackling that? Well, the policy will outline if it's bad condition, are we going to hit it or not? Same thing with some other streets, uh, 100th Avenue, for example, that's County Road also. But in the city limits, should we hit? Should we be putting salt sand down, putting a blade down, things like that? So, uh, but that's where we, the council would have a formal stance saying, here's where we think is acceptable. So, so the other side of this, does it also have the policies around pulling the plows when the plow would not go out, so that if people get stuck? And it's like, okay, that's because the snowfall, whatever conditions are not safe for the plow drivers, right? It, At it some is, point, uh, you need to say, all right, we're fighting a losing battle here, mm -hmm. right? And so is, there, is that how we do this? Uh, it can be. It's typically all you're doing is establishing the minimum criteria, it's not right. the, uh, here's when we, it's not safe. Because but that's more of a, also if it's snowing into such a level or blizzard conditions, yeah, there, okay, there is it, a, it, it, there's a better chance that they're gonna hit somebody because of the low yeah. visibility or something, then they're actually clearing the road. There is the ability for the mayor, uh, the mayor in my position also to be able to call a snow emergency 
So we said declare and depending on how you'd want to have it in the policy, but declaring saying there's a snow emergency and here's when it's not safe, things like that. So you there could also be the closing roads, yeah. right? When it's, mm -hmm. I, I don't know if we have no travel advised, how do we, how do we, I mean, we have a notification method now, yeah. right? But if we say, all right, we're pulling the plows, no travel in the city, right? Mm -hmm. Except for emergency vehicles. Mm -hmm. So that, I mean, we, that, I would hope that that's a part yeah. of this policy. That, that's a part of the policy. Okay. It also tells you who we would reach out to if they're, you know, if it's declared a snow emergency or unsafe to travel, those different things. So the policy even states who we, who we would reach out to, like what news media contacts, things like that. So it's pretty thorough. The other thing it does too is, let's say, like a mailbox is hit. It outlines the process flat out saying, here's what we're going to follow if a mailbox is hit. Within a certain amount of time, we're going to have either a temporary one set up or work with the post office to get a PO box set up temporarily or something until a permanent solution can be fixed. It also identifies a certain time for if, you know, in the springtime we'll have where some people's sprinkler heads may be hit by snow, plow blade going up on curb a little bit and they are under sprinkler system right next to the edge of the side or the curb, they'll say, okay, you have a certain time frame to claim that if you don't, say you try to come to the city in July or August saying the snow pile hit your sprinkler system, well, too late. too late. So it's going to say, okay, at a certain date, here's a cutoff. <coughs> so that way you should be able to <coughs> file a claim with the city if there was a plow blade that hit the sprinkler system or things like that. Why so, the city of Wapiton? It, just an example that we found and it was very thorough. So yeah. it was about a 12 page document that was very thorough and trying to find one that is off a city that not much bigger than us. So is there somebody you, you know, can ask down there? Or what's worked and what yep. hasn't worked with them? I've actually spoke with the city okay. manager that they've had and I can reach out to their public works director too, uh, Jim. And you guys David. got good contacts don't Yeah, you? they're good contacts. Apparently there's an office right across the street from their city hall. So. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, it'd be easy we for us that. to adopt changes that they yes. kind of wanted to do yeah. at the same yes. time. Right. A lot of work was put into that policy. I remember when it was written. Yeah. And um, it's a real encompassing one. I, the one that the city engineer public works director who wrote it was very mm -hmm. thorough. And that was one thing that he was very good at it. It's one of the things that came up there when he first started working was the snow and ice removal policy. So yeah. he wrote that policy. And, you know, I, I think it's have a, a one-page summary of that as well that we can yeah. post on the website and, and publish in the horse happens and so forth. Right. Yeah. People it, just aware. for public awareness. Yeah. yeah. And my experience also working with snow routes, uh, that is a, it, that could be a lengthy process doing that. So that's why it was best to follow something that's already existing that was pretty thorough and outline all these. So and obviously Vance has been here a couple of years for uh, complaints. <laughs> no, I'm sure he's got a few stories but between he, him and uh, he loves to pass them off to me now. <laughs> well, I mean you can kind of take those into account. Well, that's our yeah, biggest right. our Absolutely. biggest area of complaints. I yeah. know. So. Yeah. But stating ahead of time, we know what the areas are and the priorities. Of the different, uh, just setting so, expectations more yeah, often, right? right? Reduce yeah. some of the phone calls, right? That would be the goal. How, how can we reduce the phone call by just setting expectations ahead of time? Yeah. Maybe that will help. And that's what that's what we're trying to do, so people know that's what we're going to do. Right. Now we go above and beyond, but here's the minimum. Right. So. Mm -hmm. All right. Yeah. Anything and, else on that? So, no rocks in the back of those. No, no, no more, no more river rocks. Okay. We found that we found that's not very effective. <laughs> All right, moving Sorry. along. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Mayor. <laughs> All right, Brian, you got some general updates you want to run over? Um, just a couple items, as we've heard with uh, Matt's name being brought up a few times. <laughs> uh, Matt Lauer, not the news anchor, former. Uh, has accepted community development director position. We're excited to welcome him on board. Uh, the start date that we have set up with Matt is January 7th. However, we may be able to coordinate with him to come for a few days here in December just before Christmas. What is the date? January 7th. Yep. Uh, but anyways, if he is able to make it here before Christmas for a few days, I'll let council know. Maybe he'll be able to attend a council meeting or something like that to where 
Uh, everybody will get to see them again and welcome them aboard. Uh, we're excited to have them on board. Uh, and looking forward to when January 7th comes around. And where's he moving from? Spokane, Washington area. So he's moving, he has a pretty long move. Uh, and that's why, with that with the start dates, that's why, or uh, holidays, that's why I went on January 7th. It gives him roughly a little over a month. To He'll be getting some heavier jackets than he's used to. <laughs> yeah. And uh, he has a significant other that is coming that is in the HR medical area, so he did yeah. board resume, his resume in that, so we will all get that so we can see if we can yep. assist in hopefully yep. providing awesome. you know, position. A um, couple other things, uh, just, a, just a reminder, the legislative session is coming up. I'm trying to coordinate a meeting where some of our area elected officials, legislators can attend the city council meeting to come hear some of the council's concerns. Any residents are welcome to come and express their concerns too that, are, that may come up for the upcoming legislative session. There's a few items that have been talked about with the League of the Cities. Uh, as you probably heard, the Prairie Dog Bill, that's the infrastructure grant or uh, infrastructure program that would give the city of Horse roughly a million dollars every biennium, so every other year. Uh, that would be very helpful for the city. And as we get more in population, if we exceed the 5,000 population threshold, we would be in the top tier, which would give us a base uh, dollar amount of two and a half million instead of a half million. So that would help tremendously for our infrastructure projects, which we do not have a shortage of. Is, isn't it lower than 5,000? No. Is, it is 5,000? Yep. The I've heard the spiel about half a dozen times now. It's 5,000 is the base threshold for the top tier, unless the legislators change it. If they right. change it, which you never know what could happen. Uh, if you're able to push for that, that's awesome. Um, but it would give us Currently, we're set for a million. The base is a half million. Our growth growth qualifiers put us up there quite a bit too. So if we're in that next tier, our growth will help with that. So what are you planning to have them in here? Uh, we're going to try to get some here December third, so the next city council meeting. I spoke with one today, and she is unable to make it for December third. Uh, however, I did express just some of the concerns, like the prairie dog bill, to her. And just saying special assessments, we've heard are a very touchy topic right now. And that is a concern to the city council too. I didn't get in depth on special assessments with them though. Um, but I'll reach out to those other legislators and see if we can at least get the other ones to come. Well, because we're going out to Bismarck on December 5th and we'll yep. probably wind up meeting with a few of them as well, so. Yep. Um, <clears throat> let's see. Also, just a heads up, we'll be discussing quite a few different special assessment districts likely at the next council meeting related to the school infrastructure area. So 76th Street Roundabout and that 76th Avenue. Um, and then we may have a few others tied to the school district too, such as like some changes with Lakeview Drive or 63rd Street, 81st Street or Avenue those different ones. Maybe a discussion coming up. Uh, it would be a lot easier if we have this one area where we're knocking out special assessment discussion all at one time. So just give me a heads up about that. And then Corey will talk more about Main Street, but uh, the one number I want to point out is we had a very good attendance today, 47 people. So that's pretty good attendance for a city our size uh, or Main Street listening session. So. That's all I had. Okay. All right, so Johnny's still no report? I don't think so. Gotcha. Dave? No. Okay, Chelsea? No. Brian? No. I'm going to talk about this time. Okay, so there's a couple things on the plate here that I had. Um, um, had a couple people from the Diversion Authority come to chat with us last Thursday. Um, just going to keep having ongoing discussions. They are fruitful, but we got to still keep talking. So we're going to try and get together with them. When was it again, Brent? We're going to have another follow-up here second week in December is what we're shooting for. Yeah. Um, I'll keep you guys posted on that, but let's. we're just having conversations right now, and we're going to keep them going. So far, they've all been good, and let's just, we're going to keep moving forward with that. Um, Main Street listening session, we had that this afternoon. We had about 20 members on the panel, just a select group of people from around the 
Metro, the Horace Metro. Um, so, and we had four kids from the high school that were there, four seniors, and that was really good because you got to hear their perspective on us too. Um, we had a couple people from the uh, governor's office came, and gave a presentation, or helped facilitate the presentation, the conversation that went on with that. Um, and then there was a couple other members from the state in different capacities that were there to listen as well. So um, it was all good. It was an extension basically of our Envision Horace meetings, but this took it up a notch. Um, having some other different conversation, but it was good. A lot of interaction. Um, like I said, we had a lot of different backgrounds. So that was, that was, was good. Had different conversations that took place. Mm -hmm. Themes are the same, so that's good. It's nothing really changed. Everybody, even the new people who hadn't been in our Envision Horace meetings, same comments about what they liked about the town, what they want to do, how they want to see the town in 10, 15, 100 years. So we're going to have probably another follow-up discussion on that. It'll probably be in January, but that's to be determined. But that's what the plan is tentatively is to try and put together something in January. So stay tuned for that. Feedback. That's all I've got. Feedback from, I mean, one data point from the state Main Street Initiative folks that, you know, she's done like 64 of these kind of listing sessions with different communities. And overwhelmingly, she said, yeah, we've got something really special here going on. And, and this is probably one of the most exciting, you know, unique. listing sessions. Was the, unique. Unique was unique the session. phrase that got so used. I, I think, you know, we've got, a, we've got a really great opportunity here. And I, I was just impressed with the level of engagement that everyone had and, and the interest that everyone showed. So I, you got to keep the momentum going. Yep, and agreed. It's, it's really, really cool. You Especially the, the school is going to help facilitate some of that. Right? Oh yeah. Well, then Brandy uh, Pyle too was there, and she made a comment to the group too that they had one of these in Castleton, and did not have the type of engagement that we had here with the, just the conversation and everything like that. And the amount of people that showed up for this thing, so it's generating some excitement in town. That's good. That's what we need to do. So we'll just keep moving this thing forward. Just nice to hearing those feedbacks that you get. Was it invited her to move to Horace? Did she? Know? she could. Yeah. <laughs> she wanted to move to Horace. Darren. Yeah. Darren. Darren, Darren Galdi did. Yeah, that's right. Her asked her to move to Horace. It's still in her district, so. <laughs> yeah. No problem. So exciting here. Not in Casper. Uh, kind of no, she won't move. Uh, <laughs> um, would this be something that we should have, like Joel Paulson from Stantec attend? It'll for be the comp plan. That'll that'll come. Yeah, that that'll be part of the comp right. plan. That's what this next yep. meeting will be. That's mm -hmm. why I'm thinking it's probably in January. Mm -hmm. We'll try and yep. dovetail these events. Yeah, and we currently we we don't have Stantec under contract yet for the comp plan. Actually, I'll be meeting with Metro. He's still, he's still coming. Yeah, they here. probably would, but yeah, yeah. For this, yeah, yes. Yeah. In the future, is there any way to get a little publicity out of this? I mean, should we think about inviting? We did we actually. Tried, did. Yeah, we okay. did do a press release, and they've been okay. We I didn't see That's anything, including it, but let's just keep. We did do a press trying. release. Don't keep right. trying. Keep, keep trying yeah. because at some point we're going to get. Yeah. More notes. I'll okay. work on that. If, if we got a little bit more time, and unfortunately I didn't have as much time as I'd like to, but if we can get something ahead of, a little call bit more ahead of time, yeah. we can get some radio play with this too. Yeah, yeah maybe call whistleblowers and go the other yeah. way. Yeah, yeah right. <laughs> <laughs> Reverse whistleblower. Yeah. But I mean, we could try something different. With, I could, we could get on the air. With the short timing that we did have for this, I mean, it was less than a two-week turnaround. Mm -hmm. uh, we had we had a very good turnaround. Oh, absolutely! Yeah, well, we it was a very good turnaround. Getting hold of everybody too. Yeah. Okay. I, I'll get first. I'll get you second. Go. I was talking with uh, at the last MetroCog meeting. There was a representative there from our local railroad who was asking uh, if he wanted to hear heard something was going to go on at MetroCog concerning Horace and. You know, wanted to know if there was any future for the railroad, you know, like maybe instead of coming in and bending, coming straight down the, along the, the highway. And yeah, I know. We've I, heard rumors of that too. Now. I said, I said, that, well, chances of getting a bridge over uh, over the highway or over the diversion aren't too good, I don't think. But uh, you know, they they may well be suing for damages if they don't get the bridge. Yeah, that conversation got brought up last week. I was surprised as well. 
but it's cert it seems like it's on the table. I told him that I, I thought a railroad bridge along the uh, 100 would re a railroad along 100 would really be useful. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's why that conversation got brought up. So yeah, so you heard something, and I've heard something, so it's not dead air. To keep an eye on that and just see how serious they are about that. So, especially if that is going to become a light industrial mm -hmm. corridor, mm -hmm. that because mm -hmm. that it's fascinating because that was the two criteria that Mahali asked for them to mm -hmm. issue. And she said, number one, do you have natural gas supply to your city? Number two, do you have rail access? If you have those two things, you're on a map because okay. that's what the light industrial want. Yeah, they didn't want to I just want to make sure that. Because that, I heard it through the back channels, that, and that's, that's that's a huge that'd be a huge issue for. Yep, it's just it just changes the flavor of things a little bit more, definitely. Yeah, yeah. Mm. We just don't let them continue with the Fargo. I'm sorry, I didn't say that. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> you had That's a question. Be a true Go ahead. Spur. <laughs> oh, I was just going to mention that. that Oh, was it? Okay. No, I, yeah, I, I, I was, yeah, I was at, you know, in fact, in fact, I was going to say, couldn't we do more than that? <laughs> but, uh, yeah, it was a little piece that's how I found out about it. Okay. No, if we do it again, we'll try and make a bigger, bigger splash with it. Like I said, two-week turnaround. We just had to try and get participants. That was our biggest thing. So no. you guys sent in a press release? Yeah, we sent a press that. release. That's, we're at the whim of what, where they put it. That's the I unfortunate know. part about it, right? I know. It's we're trying to get on the map with... The forum is we'll, and they put in what they want to go into too. Yeah. Right. All that. right. Now. Yeah. We'll, we'll get this handled a little bit better in January. Yeah. So we'll have a little bit more lead time, I do hope. So. Yeah. All right. With that. Motion to adjourn. Yep. Second. 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 John, Dave, all in favor say aye. 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 Meetings adjourned. Thank you.